All right. That's the wrong attitude to have about that. Understand, you know, if someone hurts you in a particular way, handle it. That's why Yeshua said, hey, you got on against your brother. Before you come up and bring this offering, you need to get this thing straight. Okay. Number two, Marcia. Recognize who is being hurt by your non-forgiveness. Your anger, feel the knot in your stomach, experience the cycling and recycling of your thoughts as you re-experience. Do they stay awake as you rehearse in your mind what you would like to say or do to punish them? No. All right. That was so profound for me. Because with uh, Kim and Dorian's father, I don't want to go into all this. There were things that I really thought I had gotten over until he had to come for Dorian's marriage. Mm -hmm. him, it was just like a rush of so many things, okay, again, that had happened, okay, that I was. Hey, I was a minister with the United Pentecostal Church, okay? And all of these feelings came bubbling up there, okay? And I remember being in the car driving him, and I am crying, and I am screaming at him about all of uh, just turning the page and just reading all of these things that he had done to me, and uh, driving, and it's like, if you know around... Uh, where that wall is and if you <laughs> if you and miss don't take that corner right you wind up in that wall hall oh god okay and i'm just driving and crying and driving and crying crying and all of a sudden he looks at me and he says i don't remember <laughs> anything. i don't remember any of that and it was like something in me clicked to laughing he really thought i was going crazy <laughs> okay, really did because this was so true many years okay now we separated when dorian was less than a year old so 20 over 20 something years you know all of this was in my mind this venom had poisoned every did not remember. I just started laughing and then I got very calm. <laughs> okay, because I realized 20 years of my life. Uh, and they went on and doing everything and uh, uh, were just as happy as a clam. Okay, and I was filled, I didn't even recognize. I had in me, okay, until that time. But you have to understand, unforgiveness, it doesn't hurt the person, okay, that you are not forgiven, except with one exception for that. When the person you can't forgive is yourself. We'll get Okay. Do not demand to know why as a prerequisite. I can't say that word. Pre My tongue. For forgiveness, knowing why the behavior happened is unlikely to lessen the pain because the pain can do not know why. Occasionally, there are times when knowing why makes forgiveness unnecessary. Don't count on it and don't count on even the perpetrator. Okay. Sometimes they're just terrible human beings. Some, okay. Anything. Sometimes you need to pray for them because you, once you come to God and you see these behaviors, you know that what's going to happen you understand what i'm saying so sometimes you need to make that person your prayer partner and 
<laughs> okay, not partner, project, okay? And when you do that, okay, then you are allowed with you more, okay? Sometimes God will allow you to see yourself with him as the one who is doing the forgiving and you as the one who is needed. You understand? And when you realize how much God has forgiven you, all right, when you're praying for the difference in how you begin, God can begin to deal with you. Sometimes the person will not tell you the why, but sometimes God may reveal to you the why. You understand? And how to minister to that person. Sometimes no. Sometimes yes. Okay? You want to read one? Oh, Miriam, I'm sorry. Okay, four. Okay. Number four, make a list of what you need to forgive. What was actually done that caused your pain? No, not what you felt. What was... Okay. That's important. Not what you felt at the time, but what was actually done. Okay. And sometimes, let me tell you, our mind can play, play tricks on us. We'll walk in a room and people are talking. And then when we walk in, uh, okay, they be quiet. And you assume everybody has been talking about you. And you are immediately offended with every there. That's just like the first time when I actually went to a real service at Calvary. I swore while the pastor was preaching look at me and smile that someone had told them everything about me. Okay. I was so mad. Okay. Mad at the person. It's like, how dare you betray my inner secrets? And you, you know, you're looking and smiling. Oh, you think that was funny? Okay. Your mind can work. Okay. With that. All right. And it's God just showing you some things about yourself. Okay. Remember, it's not about what you felt. Feelings are flesh. It what it is what was actually done. Hold their eyes at me. No, a piece of dust got caught in their eye. They were trying to get it out. All right, you don't start putting that list down to see what was done. Sometimes you'll laugh at yourself because it's like I've been mad because of what. Did you want to read one? Five. Acknowledge your part when, I'm sorry, acknowledge your part where you were about your hurt or did you hit the fact that the behavior hurt you? Did you, I res, respond, reassuring. reassuring the partaker that it perpetrated, sorry, thank you, Marcia. <laughs> All right. Did you stay when you could or should have left? Mm -hmm. Been there, done that one. <laughs> if, if you so, then you too have someone. Res what's that? Hear, you, hear your start to more always move away from being a victim. Okay. Sometimes, you know, the the foot that you are, that you feel kicking you sometimes, if you look at it, four, okay? All right, I'll read number six. All right? Make a list of what you gained from the form of relationship it was. Looking back, you may be focusing on the negatives, the hurts. Yet if they were must have stayed to allow the repetition. You did not remove yourself. Why? There must have been some positive stay around. What were they? And see, sometimes, sometimes people focus on the negatives and not the positive. Ever see that? Where you remember the good things, the other person only remembers the bad things. Okay, that happened. All right, it's like nothing ever 
was I in an alternative universe? Okay, or something, you know, but perception, remember this, perception, reality. If you cannot change a person's perception, you cannot change their reality. That because that's a word of wisdom for today. If you cannot change a person's perception of an event, perception of a person, it doesn't matter how much truth you put in front of them, they will not believe it. So if you can't change perception, you can't change reality. All right. Um, Ed? Or, yeah, Ed? Number seven. Write a letter to the person. No need to mail it. Acknowledge what you gain from them. Express forgiveness for the hurts. Allow yourself to express all your feelings fully. Do not focus only on the hurts. All right. Do we do that? When we're, we're going back and forth with a person, all we do is vomit up the poison. Go ahead, number eight, Marcia. Create a ceremony in which you get rid of your list and the letter, visualizing the ending of the link between you. You may choose to visualize placing them on a raft, <laughs> drift gently away down a river, or pushing them down the river. No, <laughs> <laughs> down the river. Oh, right, right. Okay. You and I got some work to do. Okay. <laughs> you may prefer to burn them and the burn the letter. The letter. Not the person. Well, it didn't say that. It just said them. So we're going to say them, meaning and scatter the ashes. You may invent some other form of ritualized separation. Dismemberment. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna work on that one. Okay, yeah, I need to make that clear. All right. And you see, we still have some hostility, people. We still got some hostility. Okay. But guess what? We actually have that okay concept in one of our feast days. It's the taklik when you write down everything, put it on the stone, and then throw it. Do you understand how God made a way for that every year? Okay, I can remember when we used to find the stones in the back, then we would go to the back yes, and throw it yes, in the, yes. the throw it in the river, throw it in the pond there. Okay, so we need to get back to that. In fact, okay, the exercise, even though, uh, you know, you can still do that when you're making your list, okay, and all right, go ahead. And sometimes you may have to have a pile of stones and a whole ream of paper. Uh, okay. You mean can't pick up the stones and throw, throw it at them. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look, I can build a pyramid. All right. All right. The next one, uh, number eight. Okay. On nine. Visualize the person you are forgiving being blessed by your, your forgiveness and as a result being freed from the continuing behavior that hurt you. Now, I'm going to say about this same person, okay, Glenn, my ex, all right, when I came to Christ, baptized and, you know, I forgave, quote, quote, forgave. There is a surface forgive, forgiveness, and then there's deep-seated hurts that come out at another time. In forgiving, he went on to make his first several millions, very, very successful um, exporter uh, of uh, hair from Thailand. He had businesses in China and Thailand. In fact, when Market America, okay, wanted to do business in China, because of his connections, they went to him. Okay, that's how influential he was with China and Thailand and all of that. As a matter of fact, up until the last six years, six years ago, if you were wearing any hair, he was the one who, okay, imported it in from overseas. Okay, so he went on to be very 
and everything. All right. Which probably was another reason why I was okay. <laughs> but we won't go there. Okay. We won't go there. <laughs> you know, but sometimes see that seeing that person successful, guess what? Test to see if you really forgive it. Woo. Okay. All right. Who's next? Now that you have fed yourself from the pain, like thanks and re release, release the pain, feel yourself growing lighter, lighter. And joyous. And joyous. Now you are free to move on with yourself with, with without the that burden burden of bitterness miss do not look back in a rain anger anger very good very good very good so now that you freed yourself okay releasing the pain okay understand because that deep-seated unforgiveness actually begins to change your body's chemistry. Sometimes when you have people that have levels of inflammation in their body, you need to address something spiritually as well as physically as to what's causing oil. Because when you have inflammation in your body, it feels like there's a fire burning on the inside of your body. What is causing you know, and so sometimes you've got to walk a person through forgiveness. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Today we want to deal with self. It's kind of hard to give to others what you don't possess of yourself. And I'm not saying that everyone has forgiveness of themselves. You understand what I'm saying? All right. There's some of us that are actually probably closet psychopaths that really don't. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> no, but there, you know, once again, I want you to take this mirror and I want you to really just look at that. You know, and just look at that person in the mirror. That's what I was doing. It's like, oh man, I really should have really look in that, in the mirror and just really seriously look in the mirror at that per person. Okay. All right, now I want you to say to that person in the mirror, I'm sorry. Say it again. Please forgive me. Say it again. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Say it again. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Look at that person again and say, thank you. I love you. Thank you. I love you. Let me tell you something. You can't love others if you don't love yourself. Others if you can't love yourself love is something that god i think almost every creature amen every creature he created well, the amoebas you know i don't know about that you put the mirror down i saw a story last night about and this was a, uh, um, I guess, a stray cat, a you know, a rescue cat, and the cat kittens. And when they rescued it, brought it in, loved on the cat, but the cat would just cry constantly, just 
cat would constantly cling, okay, and just cry, cry, cry. And then the people who rescued it, rescued, had lost their mother and brought them into the house. And the cat went over to the puppies, cuddling the puppies, and then began nursing the puppies. And the people said for the first time that they got crying. She stopped crying. You see that mothering in outlet for, she finally had an outlet for, you know. She didn't look at those puppies and say, you a bunch of dogs, okay? You are puppies, you're not, no. All she saw was someone or something that had a need and she had a need and it was a need that they both could have. She loved those puppies, she raised those puppies, well, okay, got adopted, but the people who adopted the puppies would always bring them back to see the cat. You know, and sometimes I want you to pick up that mirror again. All right. We make mistakes in life. How many of us here are perfect? How many of us here have relationships that were just always so perfect? You understand what I'm saying? How many of us can honestly take responsibility for some of the things that happen in our relationship? You take responsibility for those things. Like it says, it takes two to tango. Okay, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love do you do you love that person in the mirror? Do you love that person in the mirror? Do all the time. So if you don't love that person in the mirror, you can't love someone. So I want you to you can put the mirror down to take this exercise again. Okay. I want you to think about some people who could use that. In fact, you really families harbor deep-seated emotions. You understand what I'm saying? And while silly, you know, uh, and when someone says, "Well, that's a silly exercise," I know you're hiding from yourself. You know or to expose yourself. You see, that can be pride sometimes. I don't want to expose myself to you because I... And if I become vulnerable, you may take advantage of me because I'm so hurting that I have to build up these walls. I had expectations of where my life would be right now, and I'm just so disappointed. And in some cases, I'm disappointed at myself because I could have made better choices, but I chose not to. We've all been there. How many people talk to themselves like that? Okay. <laughs> and that is the Get your mirror. Get your mirror. When you are so disappointed in you, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And trust me when I say, okay, Teddy, you can sing. Um, it's so good to love someone when someone loves you back. When someone loves you back. All right. Let's go to our Torah portion. A different thoughts, okay, about that. Ah, hold on. Everybody has in your handouts. All right. Um, I'll let you go over the 10 plagues. There's one that is the 10 plagues. You see that chart? And Yahweh created the world through 10 specific. 
the Egyptians denied this, considering the world to be theirs and corrupted. For Yahweh visited upon them 10 strikes or plagues, corresponding with the 10 utterances. The plagues based upon creation. We don't think about that. And God said, all right. And then what was the ninth plague? Darkness. You understand? So what I, your homework assignment is this, okay? And just open up your understanding of what is going on with this. The reason why is that if God can open up your understanding of this, you will get some understanding as what it is. You understand what I'm saying? Because Yahweh in the end times is not focused on nation. It is worldwide. We call it farming. Global warming, okay, world impact on a worldwide basis. Once again, God said he would never curse the earth again or destroy the earth by water. But he didn't say he would to do it himself because understand something, the heavens belong to Yahweh, the earth he has given to the sons of man. And made climate change the things that are going on now are due to made with what god has given us and why does he allow it because in genesis 1 he says you are in charge of go replenish the earth put you in the garden tend it let you name the animals so that is our responsibility that was given to us. It is our choices that we are making right and impacting everything here on the earth. All right. And just as he spoke it, what's going on, you will see that's how it is being destroyed. All right. And so you get a chance to. And then I think I gave you another article called, all right, the, okay, you have that? All right. You know why articles like this are important? Okay, because once again, culturally, historically, there are so many people that think the Bible is fantasy, Bible isn't real. Uh, when you go to school, they explain away everything. Am I right? To make it. But, you know, here's the whole thing. Okay. He is the creator of the universe. The universe obeys him. It is just catching up and calling it science. But it was always revealed in the Bible. One of the most powerful revelations that I had last year in the book of Numbers was, you remember the lesson behind Aaron's rod, how God used the natural to perform the supernatural. The Bible was very clear in that Aaron's rod, it was just a rod, but then branches, leaves, fruit. He went through the entire natural cycle to perform that miracle. So something that is so profound in the Brit Hadashah New Testament, when the disciples calms the waves and the wind, even the wind and the waves obey his will. Why? creator of the universe you understand what i'm saying so all of create 
obeys his will. The earth, you have to understand, the heavens and the earth are programmed with your blessings or curses. Blessings for your obedience, for disobedience. And remember the curses, always remember this. How many think the curses are meant to destroy us? Isn't that what we're taught in the church? The curses are meant to destroy us. No, they aren't. The curses are meant to allow you to realize voice and to turn around and come back. You understand? All right. So once again, science of uh, 10 plagues. This will be another homework assignment. These things are important for you to teach. And one of the reasons a kid goes off to school and may be taught by someone who is an atheist. That does happen. Should be able to take something like this and show that thing to that teacher in the book teaching Torah. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. When people are talking to me that this stuff is not in the Bible, I'm saying, let's start in Genesis. Okay. Let's look at everything that has been done that you are just catching up with that. Because if you do not recognize God's hand in certain things, you will not be able of the times, okay, which is why this is written. Because what does Paul say? These admonition and your warning. But if you don't know how to apply them, or if you apply them only spiritually, you will not physically when these things come in. You understand? You understand? So it's important, okay? We also know that the against the gods of Egypt. Why? Because, number one, Pharaoh thought that he Okay, but then again, the people thought Pharaoh was a god, and the people worship gods of nature. God have to prove. Okay, let's look at, okay, there are three times that Torah tells us that the purpose of the that the Egyptians may know that I am Yahweh. Let's go to uh, Exodus. There is a purpose behind everything. Let's say seven. Seven, verse number five. Let's start at verse one. I have made thee a Strong's number 430 Elohim to Pharaoh and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak. Okay, now what do we have here? We have a prophetic shadow picture. Moses prophet in the end times who does he send out the spirit of elijah elijah in the end times in the book of revelation what do you have the beast and his prophet that signs and wonders so this is a prophetic shadow picture of something going on in Okay, that will occur in the future. Okay, the future. All right, now it's good to know. All right, there is a Atmos. Okay, is a Pharaoh that is be the Pharaoh at the time of the Exodus. All right, the rights. Contrary to popular belief, did not build the big pyramids. 
because those pyramids were built at least over a thousand years prior to the Exodus. So let's get out of our minds, which is why it's important to study the Bible biblically. Okay? During the time of Pharaoh, there were two Pharaohs, rather the Exodus, two Pharaohs that you need to be uh, um, concerned about. I I think it is A H T M O S E, something like that. I'll get the spelling. My computer ever comes up. Okay, was a Pharaoh that he switched a whole lot of things around in Egypt. He became monotheistic. He believed in one. He commanded cities to be built, and his cities were built out of bricks made out of mud. You understand? So they can trace the timing of the exodus back to a particular event that was happening in history. Then this king happened to be the father of a very famous king called, Pharaoh called, King Tut. Okay? And when you look at certain things in history, you will be able to see what we see biblically. After that king died, boy, did they get rid of that monotheistic stuff and uh, all that. And next thing you know, okay, Israel are going through the plagues, all this kind of stuff there. So you need to look at certain things, okay, in history. But continuing with this, Speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh that he send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that I may leave Egypt and bring forth my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egypt Know that I am Yahweh when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel among them. Do you know Israel is the only nation that can point to something in history? Do you know that Yahweh be not just like all of the other gods that were worshipped, the God of nature, the God of this. He points to a God of that you can point to a particular time in history and a particular event in Do you understand how important that is? Okay? He wasn't just some nebulous figure, okay? Ra or, you know, the frog god or the god of the flies. They worship nature, okay? But Yahweh is revealing himself to people Okay, one thing that he did, not as the God of nature. When you go to the Ten Commandments, he doesn't say, I am Yahweh, the heavens and the earth. No, he reveals himself as I am Yahweh, who brought you out of Egypt. I'm the God that became involved in your history. Okay? You understand? That makes it real. Why do you think the spirit of the church wants you to deny the Torah? Come on. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Because if you can deny the Torah, ultimately, you can deny Israel's right. Especially if you've replaced Israel. And especially if your domain is not here on earth, but in heaven. You understand what I'm saying? Something to think about. I love Israel. But look, I got my bags back because I'm getting out of here. You guys are really getting ready to go through something. I'm saying, well, do me a favor. Don't love me. Okay. If that's the kind of love that you have. Okay. So this event. 
Now, those who say the church is not supposed to be involved in politics, that's because you don't know the Torah. Who did God send Moses to? Who was Pharaoh? The leader of the seat of government. Because this was a Pharaoh. Oh, God. Okay. He was God. Okay. Thought he was God. So everything God does is for. He reveals himself as the I am that I am. In the New Testament, as the I am who becomes your savior. You understand? Same I am of revelation because different purpose. I'm the God that brought you out of Egypt. That is what he did. But now I'm the God who brings you pharaohs in your life to bring you out of the bondage one was the bondage of pharaoh in egypt the other was out of the and sin you understand what i'm saying now guess what on earth as it is in heaven the first deliverance the second one was spiritual deliverance okay so what does he say all power has been given to me Heaven and in earth. Behold, I give unto you power. Where do you exercise that power? As it is in heaven, on heaven and in earth. We don't understand the principles that really are revealed in Exodus. So we go on to say, okay, and this is what I love. God doesn't send you without you knowing what's going to happen. I'm sending you out to Pharaoh, but he's not going to listen to a thing you say. And the purpose of that is so that I can show him, since he made that acclamation, he don't know me. Finish with Pharaoh. Do you know me now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Now understand something. When Pharaoh claimed, I don't know, no Yahweh. Who is Yahweh? I ain't letting these people go. So as the leader, the people follow. The people would mock their God. So anyway, he goes on. Verse 5, and the Egyptians shall know that I am Yah. Stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did as so did they. So that is the first time he tells about the purpose, okay, of his signs and wonders. Go to chapter 14, another Torah portion, but we need to look at it. Exodus 14. Let's start at one. Yahweh spake unto Moses, speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn in and camp before Hahira, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal Zephon, before ye shall camp, before it ye shall encamp by the sea. For the children of Israel. They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will hard. He shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the. That I am Yahweh. And they did so. What God you led me into. a Hope for me. And everything that I thought I got away from is pursuing me once again. Cool your jets, Israel. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Let's go to verse number. I'll tell you what. Let's go to 13. Moses said to the 
aunt. Stand ye still and see the salvation. That word Strong's 3444. See the Yeshua of Yahweh, which he shall show to you today. When ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. In other words, that's a nice way of saying shut up. And Yahweh said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Speak to the children that they may go forward. Okay, what does that tell you? your knees crying and hollering and snotting and everything and start moving. You understand what I'm saying? If God told you and cars are coming, get up off your knees because the minute you make a move to cross the street, God going to stop the car. How many times have you been trying to get out the street and cars keep coming, cars keep coming, and you just say a little prayer, oh God, please give me a way to get out. And next thing you out of the street, and you just come on out and turn around. You don't even think about it, right? How many times would God be willing to make a way for us if and believe? See, you've got to see yourself in the promised land. You understand? Because if you don't already see plan, you won't be willing to cross over through hardships. You will not see yourself through the hardships. I fantasize about building compounds, okay, in Sierra Leone. I fantasize about lottery. Listen, listen to this one. I'll make you laugh. So anyway, my daughter is a, uh, really a CPA, okay. Large sum of money, you need an accountant, you need a financial advisor, you need an attorney. You understand what I'm saying? Do not collect your winnings have all of those things in place. All right. So got the okay accountant. Kimberly can take care of a lot of things, but <laughs> attorney. Um <laughs> got the attorney because guess what? When I win all y'all going to win, you're gonna need to know how to do all of this kind of stuff. Okay, tell me how to do this. And so I'm fantasizing all this and I about it and she looks at me she goes ma that sounds real great but here's the problem i said what she goes you don't buy lottery tickets <laughs> you got to you got to buy a lottery ticket ma <laughs> okay and it's like you got the plan work the plan out first okay work the plan out got all these plans for sierra leone and all of this kind of stuff and everything your mind you've got to be willing to go when the things are hard you understand what i'm saying so, because they see the hardship and they want it easy no god backed them up into an impossible place and sent for them so all you are israel sometimes is bait and you pray and pray and pray Get up off your knees. Get these people over across the Red Sea. There comes a time when a leader has to say, going regardless of how hard it seems to be, we are doing this thing because God told us this is not our battle. It's not for us to determine where the provision is coming from. He is the one that told us and gave us the vision. He makes the provision for you understand what I'm saying? Yahweh shall fight for you. Hold your peace. Now, there's have to do. Lift up your rod, do this, and then so that he can, okay, do what it else, else he has to do. Okay, now, set me upside down. Exodus 9. Go to Exodus 9. Out of a Torah. Exodus 9, we'll start in, 
on verse 13. Now, remember, there's a time when Pharaoh hardens and God hardens his heart. Now, that word harden doesn't just mean harden against, it means strengthen. Sometimes your heart needs to be strengthened to do something. Now, we have in this portion, these couple of Torah portions coming up, the biggest example of a political fight that fight. And why do I say that? There is a reason why Pharaoh acted the way that he did. These people come in here and tell me to let them go and I just let them go. Everybody else is going to want to do the same thing. He was over a huge empire that even included Canaan. All the way up there and all the way down. Empire. Okay. If these people come in here and make demands of me, I will lose my power and authority. How does that sound familiar? We talked about that last week. Isn't that what the high priest said? If all people believe in him, hey, they go our power and authority. You understand what I'm saying? So part of Pharaoh was once again was holding on because. He didn't want the chaos of everybody else coming. Well, you let them go. Utter chaos. But the problem with that is his holding on actually created chaos. In Pharaoh's mind, I don't know, Yahweh, I'm not letting these people go. Forget about it. You go when I tell you to go. At your own. Because remember, everybody's looking at how Pharaoh is going to handle this. And Pharaoh can't say he's sorry for killing the baby. Say he's sorry. You understand what I'm saying? All right? So you have to understand part of what's going on. Why did Pharaoh harden his heart? Look at history and kingdoms. And you got to get, see, a kingdom mindset. We so spiritualize a kingdom mindset. We don't know how to act in a kingdom. We don't understand and everything. Okay, and Yahweh is teaching us protocol because he didn't just go in and tell the kids to get out. He did things for me. Okay, now he's the one that gave Pharaoh authority, but guess what? He respected authority that he gave him. I'm asking you very nicely. Okay, the first time, let my people go. No, okay. I. You're going to let my people go. <laughs> okay. You forget who's in charge here. Moses and said, Yahweh is not the boss of me. Okay. <laughs> By the end, it was over. Okay. It was over. Okay. So, you know, uh, we see, where were we? Okay. With this nine, chapter nine. Okay. Where were we? Nine, 13. Okay. Now. Moses, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of who? We're Hebrews, okay? Let my people go that they may serve me. Now, something. He calls them Hebrews here. Later on, they become Israelites. They weren't yet a nation. Okay? God, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thy heart and upon thy servants and upon that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. I get chills when I say that all the time show out all right for now i will stretch out my hand that i may smite thee and thy people with 
off from the earth. And this verse right here messed me up today. And in every deed for this, raise thee up for to show in thee my power and that my name may be declared throughout all the okay so let me tell you something that's both for the negative and that's both for the positive era again and you need to look in it look in it and read we're going to read this verse Everyone together. And in this very deed for this cause have I raised thee up. Look at Oh, come on now. Raise thee up for the show in you. Look in the mirror. My power declared throughout all the earth. Why were you born at this time? You were born at this time so that at this time God raised you up so that he could show through you all the earth will know that he is Yahweh. Go into all the earth and declare Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You'll jump up, okay? Do I need to get the drummer and the piano player, okay? You know, for this cause, everything going raised you up. For this cause, okay, you understand? Everything you've gone through for this cause, it was for this cause in this timing right now because he wants to demonstrate his power through you but when you hate yourself or don't understand it's like you're under a cloud you have no purpose what is my purpose i was raised up so that god could show his power come on hallelujah 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 this listen this whole torah portion and all of this is not just about yahweh being israelites okay and everyone else okay but it's all he is the sovereign power over all the universe you understand Earth, whether you believe in him or not. But let me tell you something. Do you know there is not one instance in our Moses was told to go to Pharaoh and say, convert. Oh, you missed that. Didn't we miss that? He didn't say, you're going to be, I'm going to be your God now. He didn't even give him the offer. I'm creator of the heavens and the earth, but I'm their God. Oh, no, you don't hear what I'm saying. I'm creator of the heavens and the earth, but Yahweh is our God. Ooh, our God is the creator of heavens and earth. I don't know who you are worshiping out there, but my God is the creator of the heavens and the earth who became my redeemer, my deliverer, and will destroy anything that comes against me. Come on a personal God to Israel, the God of history. Every time I look at that map there, it confirms earth. there is an earthly sign. That earthly sign is the nation of Israel, that Yahweh is our God, who is the creator of the heavens and the earth, who is our deliverer, our redeemer, our savior. Come on. Woo! All right. So the plagues in particular, when we look at the plagues, they go against the God. The first plague, blood. Okay. Is the God happy, which is the God of the Nile. 
What was Yeshua's first written miracle? Ah, oh, come on, Holy Ghost. <laughs> okay. Oh, we never ever looked at Yeshua's miracle. The plagues and all of that. Come on. Moses, he's a prophet like unto Moses. Moses' first miracle. Yeshua's first miracle was turning the waters to wine. Which is what? The blood of the great. Next one, frogs was hit. The Egyptian goddess of fertility. Remember, he's showing that there is none like him over all the earth. He's showing his all the gods of Egypt. Last one in particular, Ra. I have a handout. I'll probably get that next week with all of the different gods on it. The, the sun god. When God brings darkness, he's showing himself as the creator or over Ra. Pharaoh at that point should have said, okay, because remember, physical representative on earth of Ra. Okay. Say, okay, it's done. We're, you know, I'm looking at the palace and I'm looking over at Elver and Goshen, the light over here, no light over here where I am. I'm able to get out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, but God hardens his heart. Okay? Heart or strengthen his heart. Because I can't just let these people go. Pharaoh is lost. Let these people go. I can't if I want to hold on to my power. I don't care what is going on in this nation. This basket there's chaos all over the place but i cannot okay let these people go i will not give come on so god strengthen his heart to keep on the path that he was on that last plague kind of got him. Why? Because it hit his house in a way. Some <laughs> until some tragedy hits their house in a personal way. Okay. So based upon the plagues, the Egyptians un of the plagues. The Egyptians understood the message of the Pharaoh understood the message of the plagues. But in order to keep his an empire, he couldn't just let the people go. Why? Because he would have shown the people that greater than me. And that would have been utter chaos. Ooh. Okay. So Yahweh showed all the powers that they were currently worshiping, uh, okay, worshiping, okay, that Yahweh, the God of Israel, the world and all humanity also. All right. Now, Pharaoh put himself as God. Why was that last plague Because it hit his son. Our God. 
you should be able to raise your hallelujah okay if it's your own son you are not the creator of the heavens and earth and you god okay and like i said a point to mention that i kept on seeing been reading does god imply that he wanted the egyptians to convert and come into torah he didn't offer that wasn't the purpose you know what that shows you okay when god is rendering these judgments their judgments okay justice is elohim god of judgment and justice justice is universal to every is universal am i right there are just certain things you shouldn't do because it's wrong pharaoh that's just plain wrong i don't care who you are that was just foul okay justice is religion isn't god announced himself i'm god of the hebrews covenant with their fathers i didn't make a covenant with your fathers i made a covenant with their fathers okay all right pharaoh killing the israelites was unforgiven the egyptians following his lead to persecute the israelites was an unforgivable sin pardonable sin there had to be justice and there had to be justice those who were the victims you as an attorney now jd okay understand be justice you go to court to get justice you understand what i'm saying order guess what the people could have said no but because the people participated in it they had to go that is justice and why was there a separation between israel and the egyptians because israel needed to see that yahweh the earth the one to get him out but he's a god of justice you understand now let me say something it is very to at times believe in a god who is not a just god you understand that's why people especially in the african-american community who go over to islam because they don't see okay yeshua as the god of just to them in slavery you understand what i'm saying however the jews know that yahweh is a god of that every passover you understand what i'm saying was the civil war a judgment on the united states what's it going to take Ooh. so guess what it's going to be set up again you will see the same characteristics you will see those that had rights were given rights israel come a leader will come up to begin to take away those rights. Reversals of Joseph will come in and begin to take away the freedoms, okay, that Joseph. And when you begin to see that a leader, that nation is about to go. Okay, remember what happened in Jeremiah, all right? They gave the release to the people, then they took it back. It with you, Nebuchadnezzar's coming in here, and that's it. Okay, you're not even, I'm, you're not even gonna make it out of this one. Okay, at that, over and over again. Remember, Pharaoh 
could not let the people go because it would have created chaos in his empire. At the same thing. Okay? Then when people, here's another reason. And people start leaving you in mass. What does that say to everyone else? Problem. There's a vulnerability. Why do you think the Soviet Union wouldn't let the Jews go? They didn't weren't able to go until after the Soviet <laughs> Union was taken down. Oh, maybe God took the Soviet Union down. His people go. Hello. Hello. Okay. But that would have communicated. Let's look at nations across the world. You see a lot of people leaving to emigrate into the United States. We know if we look back at those lands, there are problems there. Okay. So the only way if you start having problems in your nation, what is the one thing that you had better do? Your borders. You're not going to let anyone in, and eventually you're not going to let anyone out. You're going to have passports. If you go out, you may not be able to come back in. Or if you're already in, you may not be able to do that. All of these are signs. They are signs, okay? I'll give me about. All right. Unfortunately for Pharaoh, every plague created more chaos. They would not let the Israelites go. Why? Because they were a source of free labor. That number of people, when you got things to do, free labor, right? So that means you had a group of people whose income was here. You had a group of people whose income was here. I will only give you so much freedom. Okay. When you see that source of free, when you see that of low income, you will do nothing to expand the earning capabilities of those people. You purposely keep them low so that you can subject them. It's a form of economic slavery. You understand? If you don't know how things operate here in the physical, you won't see it. You understand? And you won't know how. Okay, about it. All right. Um, we talked about pride. After saying no for five plagues, for the next. <laughs> okay. He couldn't say, I'm sorry, even after his people came to him. Because, you know, he just give it up, Pharaoh. Give it up. Come on. So Moses had to come back and bring some more condemning evidence. Faith being Yahweh. Okay. He not only, think about it, he not only took down Pharaoh in that nation, those who supported Pharaoh. All right. Um, let me see. Last but not least. You cannot keep or maintain order when the founding of that order is based upon oppression and injustice. You will only do it for a certain amount of time. Only a certain amount of time. Okay. When you enslave the benefit of the few, look at every empire, Greece, Rome, where's the day? Oh, it don't exist. Roman Empire. Oh, it doesn't exist. Okay. Hitler tried to revive it. Where's he? Oh, it don't exist. Unless your conspiracy theory to say that he anywhere in South America. Okay. Doesn't exist. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> For power. 
who base their foundation and economy upon slavery and free labor eventually. <clears throat> you understand what I'm saying with that? So if your foundation, you'll last for a certain amount of time, but you won't last forever. You can look at certain things. Our Constitution, okay, was not founded upon all men. If it's flawed in the beginning, everything built upon it <coughs> will have that same flaw. He ate it out of rebellion to authority. Our country was created or founded to authority. So those seeds of rebellion still exist. Okay? And we see it periodically raise its head up. We had Vietnam War and everything that went on there. Civil War. If you begin to look, you can see some Okay, let me tell you something. It's that time again. It is that time again. All right. Exodus, once again, is the written story of how the creator of the universe, the supreme power, entered. Before we see him as creator of the heavens and the earth, we see him with the flood. Now we have a historical event and everything that happens. He not only is our creator of the heavens and the earth, he's our personal God. And if people understood that, people have lost their fear of Yahweh. It is our responsibility him again okay to introduce him again when you get that let me tell you something remember the disciples and the apostles had no problem with Torah obedience or who Yeshua was you understand? still wrestle with certain things okay with that which is why you see things so off kilter All right, now, none of the, of the disciples were perfect. You see, Peter had issues, am I right? But Peter, once again, you want us to call fire from heaven? He didn't say, Yeshua will obey you. No, you want us to call fire from heaven. No. You sure didn't say you can't do that. Because by then, they believed he had sent them out, go out. They were doing it. Even the devils are subject to us through thy name. Full of that authority. They knew who they represented. You understand what I'm saying? You know, when you and you get that certificate, won't nobody be able to tell you nothing. You understand what I'm saying? But you know who you are. Okay, you are a, a certified, you know, uh, attorney general. I mean, uh, just grand. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Okay, at that point in time, that's it. All right, you will walk in the Oh, come on, Holy Ghost. Okay? Because you studied for it, you sacrificed for it. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody going to tell you nothing or ever take it away from you. You understand what I'm saying? When you this Torah, will nobody, won't nobody be able to take anything away from you again. 
fantasize so much about those things going on because I know, I know what Yahweh has said. I've asked, show me how to do what it is you've given and the resources and the resources. If he will do it. You start putting things in place, get out of that pity parties and all that kind of stuff, and he will begin that law of attraction. You understand? I've seen it in these last couple of weeks. Okay, seen it in these last couple of weeks. Pray us. Father God, we just thank you today. This lesson of freedom, this lesson of our creator God intervening in history, Father God, to show himself as our personal savior. Lord, we in we cry out to you, Lord our God. Father, on this day, we stand still and we see the salvation of the Lord. Father God, for those problems we see today, ever, because you've spoken it, you've said it. Lord, for this cause, yes. you raise us up for this time to yes. show in thee my power that my now, Lord, establish your covenant with us. Show us the yes. way. Teach us, Lord. Lead us. Guide us, Father. Cause us not to stand still, but to move forward in spirit father god in your name you're sure our salvation we yes. pray oh father god all our enemies father god are small in your sight small in your sight all our troubles lord god are small in your sight now lord on this day cause us to go forth in your name in power cause us to do father god as you've caused us to be born at this time for this purpose for this sake in yeshua's name we're thanking you we're praying you father god year. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, this day for the pastor, for the messengers. Lord, we pray for the families of those that have passed away and for those that are sick. Power. We thank you, Father God, that we are your children, we are your people, that we are Hebrews, that we've gathered in the synagogue on the Sabbath. In his name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah.